What's poppin' T Squad? What is up? So I just finished listening to Jay Z's latest album, Four Four Four. And my God, this man and did it again. If you do not know, Jay Z is one of my favorite rappers of all time. He's in my top five. I'm a huge fan of this man's work ethic, of his lyricism, um, of his grind, of his swag, his charisma, his business mind. Like, oh my God, like, whew. God couldn't have put two powerful, two more powerful people together when than Jay-Z and Beyonce. Them two motherfuckers was like determined to be together. Like if them two niggas ain't equally yoked. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. But the album has, let me see, 10 tracks on it. 10 tracks. We have Kill Jay-Z is the first song. Um, And when you start the album with Kill Jay-Z, of course, he's not saying kill himself literally. But um, in the song, what sticks out the most is he goes right in on the Kanye West situation um, and about how I told you all this on since you asked, um, about how, uh, or was it not on since you asked? I'm sorry. I told you all about this on one of my all T all shade videos. The reason why him and Kanye kind of fell out is because Kanye borrowed money from him years ago for Donda when he was starting the Donda clothing line and he wasn't able to pay it back when he said he was, you know, he's in debt. And so that put a rift between him and Jay-Z's relationship. And Jay addresses it on Steel Jay-Z about how he gave him $20 million. And then you take 20 minutes to talk about me and my wife on stage. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Um, and, and that's just like, oh, my God. Like, that song was just crazy because anybody that has a name in the industry or not even just a name in the industry, anybody that has a friend that you've been there for and did stuff for and gave your all to and then they turn around and shit on you, it's the it's the worst feeling ever in life. And you know he took Kanye under his wing as like his little brother. And it was just a fucked up ass thing that happened, you know, and it just further put a rift between that friendship and I don't think they will ever be the same after that, ever. Ever. The situation will never be the same. I know that they, uh, after Kanye went on his little retreat after his mental breakdown, that him and Kim went over to Jay and Beyonce's house in L.A. to squash things and talk about whatever happened when he lost his fucking mind. But I think they probably forgave him, but you know you forgive, but you never forget. So that is a must-have song to listen to. The story of OJ is the only song that has a video to go to it. It's a cartoon video, but it is a cartoon video unlike anything you've ever seen. It is a must-see video to watch. It will open your mind up into everything that's going on in America now, in the past, and in the hopefully not in the future. Um, and he's just addressing how... No matter what, we as black people are always looked at as a nigga, whether you light skin, black skin, black, um, dark skin, rich, poor, hustler, it don't matter. At the end of the day, these white people still look at us as a nigga. Don't give a fuck how much money you got, how pretty you are, you still a nigga in their fucking eyes. Smile, no, uh, track three features his mother, Gloria Carter. And he talks about spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear what he said in the song, turn away now. Don't listen. In the song, he talks about something that I did not know about his mother personally. And I thought I pretty much knew everything about his family that he has released to us to the public or has been released to the public. That his mother is a lesbian. Did not know that about Miss Gloria. Knew that she was a drug addict back in the day. Knew that she had, you know, multiple children with him, his brothers and sisters. And that his father wasn't there to raise him. And that he even sold drugs to his mother at one point. Never did I know that she was a lesbian. It was something that he was ashamed of growing up. But now he don't give a fuck. That's his mama and he loves her. All he wants is for her to be happy. And then he's happy she found someone that she does love. So that was crazy to find out. And then we heard Gloria at the end of the song, you know, saying a poem. And it was just a beautiful song. And then that second verse, Jay-Z goes the fuck in. He goes the fuck in. And... He basically also talks about, 
you know, all you little new school ass niggas out here thinking y'all doing something. Y'all need to start investing instead of in jewelry and clothes and these whack ass cars and shit. Invest in art. Invest in homes. Invest in property and things. So that's how these Jewish people out here pass the money down from generation to generation. He talks about, you know, when I came up, I didn't have shit. Now I'm the first person in my family that will have money that will have that will be able to help my family generations ahead. So he's really just trying to talk to not even just black, well, he's really talking to these black niggas and even us as women. He's trying to talk to us and tell us about investing and saving and to stop spending money on stupid shit and invest in ourselves, invest in us as a black people and invest in our own businesses. Here we go to track um, four, Caught Their Eyes featuring Frank Ocean. It's a dope uh, song. I really can't remember too much about that one. But um, that's a dope song as well. I think that might be the song where he talks about egging Solange on in the elevator um, and how he knew that he had fucked up. And instead of apologizing to her, he kept on fucking with Solange. And that's what led to the fight outside of, you know, him being an asshole and cheating. Track 5444, he said um, he actually has a list where he breaks down really quickly the thought process behind every song that you can find on Tidal. But on track 444, he said he literally woke about his sleep at 444 in the morning to write this song. And that's when he decided to name the album 444 and this song 444. And then the song is basically a love letter to Beyonce, where he admits to cheating on her back when she was 21 years old. They had their problems. She left him. And he was, she was on tour at that time. She would not answer his phone calls. He was calling her, begging her to call him back. They would talk for hours and him basically, you know, telling her, like, don't embarrass me. Instead of saying, be mine, he telling her, like, look, don't embarrass me. You know, this is bullshit by leaving me. And that was basically his way of saying, be my girlfriend. And how later on in their relationship, he cheated on her and had a menage, a twa. And that almost fucked up his family. He also talked about the miscarriage that she had and how she couldn't hold the baby because he wasn't there. He was just being a fucked up ass man. He was just being selfish, you know, cheating, doing all these things. But he realized his mistake and he realizes now that he has a daughter, how he would never want his daughter to see him not be the man that he's supposed to be for her mother. It's just a beautiful song and it's raw. It's uncut. And I know a lot of the Beyonce uh, Instagram pages were saying that he cheated on, he had the Minaj when she was 21, not her recently. I don't know, but at the end of the day, the nigga cheated. And who the fuck cheats on mother? Nobody cheats on Beyonce, goddammit. When he cheated on her, he cheated on all of us. So all of our hearts fucking hurt. But it's good to see him as a man accept his mistakes, own up to it. And I think that's what most men need to learn. And what he's trying to tell you all, don't fuck up home. Home is where the heart is. Don't fuck it up with the woman that's holding you down to be out here fucking with these little skank ass bitches that don't give a fuck about you. And he even, I don't know if it was on this song, I think it's the next song. I'm all over the place because it's just an amazing album. But he says a line, he was like, I never want another woman to know something about me that you don't know. You never let another bitch have that, uh, any type of one up over your woman at home. You like, you just never do that shit. And he realizes how fucked up it was that he cheated on Beyonce and it was just it's just it's just crazy like I don't want to give away too much I want y'all to be able to listen to it and soak into it the next song is oh, Family Feud and it does not say on the track that Beyonce is featured but she does have vocals on the song and mother gives us a little quick oh. <laughs> she gives us some cute vocals real quick to let you niggas know and in this song he basically continues to talk about the situations that they had with one another and how he did her and how, you know, he cheated and how he wasn't, you know, mature enough for her and how she grew up fast. I think that was on another song, but basically on 444 and Family Feud is basically two songs about how much of an ancient ass nigga this man was and him coming to terms that he needed to grow the fuck up and be a fucking man and how she grew up faster than he did even though he's fucking 12 years older than her ass 
And it said the beat is sickening, the vocals is sickening by whoever this girl is is singing outside of Beyonce. The fucking vocals is bananas. Next song is Bam featuring Damian Marley, and that is a bop. That is a bop, a bop, a bop, a bop. And in this song, he talk about these little newfangled niggas once again, and how these niggas get on the ground, stunning with putting money up to their ears and shit. Arguing on fucking Instagram, going, you know, arguing, beefing on the internet like real niggas don't do that shit. Like, he just trying to tell you little niggas to boss the fuck up and stop cooning for these fucking white folks. And to stop all this fake beef shit and how basically none of you niggas is touching me. Like, don't even put me in the same conversations as you niggas. Because I'm on a whole nother plateau than you little motherfuckers. And basically I'm coming back to let you all know that in case you all fucking forgot. I am the greatest and the best of all time that is alive. And that's basically what he's trying to tell you motherfuckers. Like, I'm on some whole other shit. You niggas out here fighting and shit at the BET Awards. I'm out here fucking owning another business that's about to be worth $200 million. I'm up here releasing music on my own motherfucking app. Like, what are you niggas doing? Like, invest in yourself and stop fucking the same hoes. He also talked about how these niggas are fucking these same Instagram bitches. Like, what are you niggas doing? He's trying to tell y'all to, um, he's giving y'all fucking jewels and trying to tell you how to boss up and man up and be a man of pride and elegance and class and be smart and stop trying to dumb yourself down. Then on track number eight, Moonlight. Oh, my God. Moonlight, the chorus basically talks about how even when we win, we lose. How at the Oscars, of course, Moonlight won Best Picture. But instead, La La Land was who they announced first. So when it everything was found out that it was a mistake and it was time for the people of Moonlight to come on stage, the, the feeling was fucked up. It was The feeling was gone. It was just a fucked up ass moment. It was just like, we finally, as black people, win a Best Picture Award for a movie with an all-black cast, black director, black writers, and then the moment is ruined by you fucking white people. Like, what the fuck? Like, no matter how hard we try, no matter how much we do, and no matter how much we do win, and we fucking lose in the end. Brilliant song. Love it. Number nine, Mar Mar Marcy Me talks about how he grew up in the Marcy Projects and how, you know, he's become the man that he is now. Um, also on a track, let me go back to Family Feud. He talks about what's better than uh, one billionaire, too. <laughs> like, me and my wife about to be billionaires. I don't know what the fuck you motherfuckers is on, but don't be with this little lady. Don't be with no lazy ass bitch. Be with a bitch that's going to push you and you can push her. Um, he also says on um, that song, like, uh, I don't know what you heard about an ugly Billy billionaire, nigga. I'm cute. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got Jay-Z fucked up. Last song is Legacy, another dope track. This album is sick. One of the best albums I've heard thus far in 2017. I'm so pleased with this album. It's basically the Black Lemonade. Um, and I knew that's what he was going to do, where he's going to show like the black man's plight in America and try to give some knowledge to the black uh, community, black men, be the voice for black men, a positive voice for black men. And he just speaks on a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that needs to be heard. And he did it in such a dope way. I like the um, promotional build up for the album. It, it, it just leaves you speechless when you're done. The beats was great. Everything was great. Everything is great. I give this album a 10 out of 10, five stars. There's nothing bad that you can say about this album. It is a must listen to album. You have to listen to this album, especially if you have sons or a husband. Put them on this shit so they can get some game and get some knowledge in their head. Because there's so many lost black souls out here in this world that's just doing what they see other people do and living how they see the environment around them instead of reaching for the stars and reaching for their goals. Because there's so many people out here that believe that they can't make it and they can't be what other than what they see in their environment and the people around them. It's just a phenomenal album. Can't say nothing more about Jay-Z. I, I want to fight that nigga for, you know, cheating on mother. But that also goes to show you that the, the prettiest bitches can still get cheated on too. These niggas don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. 
It don't give a fuck. You could be the, the one of the most beautiful bitches in the world. You still get cheated on. So, uh, it's not right though. Please forgive, please believe that. But, um, this album is just phenomenal. Please take a listen to it. Um, I'm just happy that I was alive today to listen to it. It's some really great music. Happy for the Carters. They win again. Can't wait to see the twins. Of course, when they release pictures and names, I will be doing a video losing my fucking mind. They're probably going to do some evil ass shit where they, you know, them motherfuckers like to one two punch your ass. And they're probably going to release pictures of the twins some more. Watch. Watch. Uh, and I'm not going to be fucking ready. I'm not going to be fucking ready. So listen to 444 if you have title. Of course, I have title. Only $13 a month. Support, once again, support black-owned businesses. Like he said, why the fuck would I drink Belvedere when I know Puff got Ciroc? Stop putting your money into these white-owned businesses and support our own black-owned businesses so we can have more opportunities for us. Because ain't nobody going to look out for us but us. So support Tidal instead of having Apple fucking Music or Spotify. So stop giving your money to these black-owned businesses. Tidal is this shit. I have been a, on the, a Tidal subscriber now for a year. Only $13 a month is coming out of your account. You're getting Every fucking album that has ever existed to man, all new albums every Tuesday, every video known to man, you're getting web series and movies on here, $13 a month. If you give your money to Netflix and Hulu, why not give your money to Tidal? Support each other. Support our own people. Love you guys. And by the way, buy my new novel, Crazy in the Sky. Link is down below. Support a sister. Love y'all. Have a good night. Bye.